Okay, so welcome to part 12 of Learning Go. And in this video, we're going to be focused on how to define our own functions in Go. So we've been using this function, main, which is the main brain of the Go program that we've been using in the past 11 videos. But we're going to be writing our own function, which is going to follow a pretty similar pattern to what we have here. So the functions we're going to define are outside of this main function. And if you've programmed in anything like Python, Java, C++, the general pattern for how functions are defined and used in Go should be somewhat familiar to you. So we'll go ahead and use the func keyword to define our own function. And I'm going to define a very simple function, which is just going to be responsible for taking two integers as input and then returning an integer, which is going to be the sum of the two integers we pass in. So we say func, we give the function a name, and then we pass in the arguments that we wish to take in for this function. So this function is going to take in two arguments. And in Go, what you have to do is you have to specify the type of each of the arguments that are being passed in. So in this case, a is an integer, so you specify that by giving a space and then int, and then b is also going to be an integer as well. So if you programmed in Python, you're probably used to not having to specify the type of argument that is being passed in. Python's able to figure that out for you. Go wants you to actually specify the type of variables that are going to be passed in as arguments for your functions. And you also need to specify the return type. So again, this function will be responsible for adding a and b together. So it's going to return an int, and we can specify that by writing int after the parenthesis of this function. So then we open, close, curly braces, and inside here will be the logic of this particular function. So again, very simple function. All it's going to do is it's just going to return a plus b. It's just going to do that. So let's go ahead and go to our main program and call the add function and just print the result out to the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to say answer colon equals add, so we're calling our own function. We'll pass in two integers, we'll just pass in one and one. And then what we'll do is we'll print that result to the screen. So we'll say format.printline, and then we'll pass in answer, which is what we, which is what our function should return. So again, we're calling our add function. What's being returned is the sum of a plus b. That's being thrown into answer, and then we're just printing that out to the screen. So we'll save that, we'll clear the terminal, and then we'll go ahead and run it. So we'll say run, or rather go run, 12 underscore functions dot go. And if we do that, we see the output of our function taking one and one, sums them together, and gives the result of two. So we can define functions in another way as well, which is a little bit more concise in, in the event that the types of the arguments that we're passing through are all the same. So in this instance, we're passing both a and b into this function, and they both happen to be ints. So one thing you can do, we'll use this other example to illustrate this, we'll define another function called add three. And what this is going to do is it's going to take three different arguments. And all of these are going to be of type int. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to add a plus b plus c and then return the result. So what we can do in Go, as long as all of these arguments here are integers, we can just specify that here. So Go is going to see that. It's going to say, OK, c is an integer, c, b is to be treated as an integer, as is a. And then we still have to specify the return type. And then inside of the function, we'll go ahead and just return a plus b plus c. So let's go ahead and call that function. So we'll say, let's say answer two, colon equals add three. We'll give three numbers, so one, one, and one. And then we'll print that result out to the screen. So we'll say format.println answer two. So we should see three here. And indeed, we see three. So that's pretty much it for this video on functions. If you have any questions or comments or anything of the sort, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. The code, as always, will be hosted on my GitHub page, and you can I'll, I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.